transcripts and all of that because my homeboy Al Spruill was up at a and Al was the local legend here. He uh, got dressed by Detroit. He was about 6'5", point guard, handles, oh, Scott, uh, and all of that. And he was, he was uh, JT Barber. A lot of older folks know about him. He was, a, he was like a living legend, man, in this area. My brother comes. My brother played with Walt Bellamy. I know you put no yes, Bellamy. Sir, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. My brother played high school ball. My oldest brother played high school ball with Walt Bellamy. Mm -hmm. they, he was on the '57 uh, JT Barber championship team. And, uh, man. and so my other brother Della, he was he ran track at JT Barber. He's one of the fastest tractors in the East at that time. Uh, so we so we come from. Uh, you come from a sports family. Yeah. And even Cause, your son, just, Cause your son Mike best. He was nice at basketball. Yeah, Mike. If Mike would put the time and he really in the gym. Yes, yeah, sir. He, he was really the, good, buddy. Yeah, if he put the time in, he would been. He'd have been. Oh my yeah. God, he was really yeah. good. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Joshua Covington Show. This is episode 64. And before we get into our special guest, I would like to shout out our sponsor, the MMC Insurance Company, located on Trent Road. They do home, auto, and life insurance owned by Travis Wayne. So if you need any of those insurances, contact Travis Wayne and he'll hook you up. Now, for my special guest, West Craven High Basketball Hall of Fame legend. He graduated in 1974. He played on a semi-pro team at Fairville. And now he's back giving his time, efforts, and energy to the community. He was the 2011 Craven Community College Staff Person of the Year. And now he's doing amazing things and still out here being the best man he could be in 2021. My man, Mr. Mark Best. How are you doing today, sir? Fine, Josh. How are you? I'm doing great. Good, good. How, how you been since the pandemic hit us in March and hey. it's been going on for so long? It don't seem like it's going to end. Well, I tell you what, Josh, you know, it's, it's giving me a lot of time and it's good to be retired doing this. It's good to have a backyard. This right here is one of my projects. I could come out and meditate in the morning time and decide what I'm going to do, come out and get some fresh air. Yes, sir. So, hey, I, I stay busy, mowing the yard, cleaning up, doing, still doing things in the community also. Yes, sir. So, I'm, I'm, so even though I'm retired from the college and the pandemic's hit, I'm still doing some things with food distribution. Uh, I'm uh, also on the board of director for the North, for the uh, Craven County Department of Social Services. I'm the director of the board. Yes, uh, I'm on the sheriff advisory board here, uh, Craven County Sheriff Advisory Board. Yes, sir. And I'm also I just uh, uh, finished my term on the Police Civil Service Board. Uh, so I, I, you know, I'm still active as far as engaging and different things in the community. Yes, sir. The, the grind don't stop for you. Uh, it doesn't. People still know my number. I haven't changed, so people still call me when there's a need, and that's that's been my passion. I and I just something that my parents instilled in me. Uh, they were community folks. Your grandparents knew them well. Yes, sir. Um, and you know, they instilled that in me, and I, I, I do what I do because they taught me and in memory of them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So talk a little bit about your childhood. How did you grow up? Well, I grew up here in. Uh, in this community, plus here, we're back on family yes, property. Uh, I have, uh, you know, it, growing up in Pleasant Hill, there was a lot of families. We all got along well. We used to go out here to Pleasant Hill School on Sundays and play baseball, football, and basketball. Yes, sir. And uh, Pleasant Hill was the was an all African American school until we were the last eight grade class to graduate from school. Uh, my dad was the custodian out there, so my brothers died every afternoon after school. We knew we had work to do because we helped him clean. We helped him clean this because that's what's yeah. up. Yes, so, sir. And then my aunt had a store right on the corner. My aunt had a store on the corner, so everybody would stop by her store in the mornings, afternoons, go to school, and, and of course, we knew Pleasant Hill School in and out, which windows were locked, which wouldn't. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and you know, Pleasant Hill that time. You, this is after you. Pleasant Hill had a country club down there, and they also had a motel. It was the hub of the community. We had a hotel. We had a hotel right there. Us, Pleasant yes, Hill. Yes, right, right up there, motel. It was called Pleasant Hill Motel. People used to have rooms. They had people on weekends. People go down to get hamburgers and all that and stuff oh, like that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. it, it was Pleasant Hill was the hub of entertainment for the black community at that time. Uh, yes, sir. We would have groups from New York who would drive, bring their buses down. They would they would stay at the hotel. They would eat there and go to the club and do entertainment and all of that. Man, it was it was rocking and rolling. Oh my goodness, man! So you, it sounds like y'all grew up kind of kind of great back we, in the we, day. We had a we had an awesome time. We knew everyone in everyone in the community. 
Uh, years ago, my dad and some more men from the community, uh, and they're part of North Carolina history. I just want to let you know that they had an interview with a young lady out of UNC Chapel Hill, and she, it, it was how they adapted during Jim Crow time in the Depression. And one of the things that kept them through because they all looked out for each other, so nobody knew that they were poor. Because if one person had, they shared it with, they shared it with the other person. Else. Yes, sir. So they said, well, the depression didn't affect us that much because we all was already looking out for everyone and we didn't have much money anyway. So my dad was a farmer, my grandfather was a farmer. Uh, the property that we have, my dad worked for it and purchased from my grandfather. My grandfather worked and purchased it from a white gentleman. He and five old black family purchased from Buzzer Hill to the fork here, up to the other fork. They purchased all this property. And then other families moved in. I, the best family one, was one of the original five families to move into. To move community. into the oh my goodness, that's yes. amazing. Yes. Yes, sir. So, going from your childhood, and I'm gonna take you a little step further to high school because you told me before the show all this right here that I that I just didn't know about, and now that I'm getting a little bit knowledge okay. about. Talk about being a basketball player at West Carolina because you know I was a basketball player. Yeah, at I know. Yes, sir. I and no. I. And I love the fact that you brought all these trophies out here. So give me a little insight on what they are. Well, Josh, I'm going to tell you, this is just, I'm, a, I'm a new because they're so old and stuff. My wife said, about time, you need to get them out the house. So I started getting some out the house, some I thrown away, some she threw out in the shed and all of that. No, we can't throw them yeah, away she, now. She, she said, like, you know, that's past tense and stuff. So that's what the, that's what the word legend meant. You, you has been. You yes, know? sir. So, but uh, uh, the first year we played, uh, organized ball because I just played ball and then one year at Pleasant Hill we was getting ready our eighth grade year we had a gentleman named Mr. Ethel uh, who came out he was a substitute teacher and there was other schools that was already integrated and had basketball teams so he came in and he watched us out on the playground because our coach was outside and he said I'm gonna get a you know organize you guys and see if y'all can get two or three games in before the end of the year yes, sir. and so we uh we did that and he got us three games, fought ball well, and then we played, played football on twice in Jasper. And we didn't have jerseys, Josh. We had like what they call the white beaters. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we wrote our numbers on the <laughs> stuff, man. And we was representing out, you know, Pleasant Hill. But, yeah, the thing, right. but the thing about it, we lost all three games. But, you know, when we played football the first time, it blew us out. The second time, it only beat us by one. When we played Jasper, that was awesome because everyone that's from Pleasant Hill was going to Jasper then because it was middle school and high school, mm. and and we lost by one point. But Hold on, I mean in the road. You said Jasper was the middle school and the high school. Yeah, they had they had middle school and high school at Jasper. At Jasper, so yeah. everybody was just going to the two yeah, same because, schools. Yeah, because they were trying, they were starting the consolidation process. So for, so kids from here that used to go to J.T. Barber is now they're going to Jasper High. Uh, folks from Fort Bonwell were going to Jasper, and then they had. That year before we graduated, they had like another school. Because some of the folks that went to school with us yes, sir. had gone to Jasper. But I always remember this, Josh, which was, you know, representing the community because the Jasper Gym was packed from people from this community. Yes, Pleasant Hill. Because they, yeah, they knew that Pleasant Hill School was representing them. Yes, sir. And we lost by one point. But the greatest thing it had, because I think we had like maybe 25 points and I had like maybe 21 of them. and. And to have folks from your community, and these are high school kids, when they at the game, they all pick me up on their shoulders and carry me to the dressing room. Even and after they, a loss. Even after a loss, because we represented them. And they so say, well, they, they yeah, were. Yeah, they, I mean, to do that, to see my friends and people I grew up with to, to pick me up. And then I went to West Craven. I went to Jasper my ninth grade year. The thing I had against me, Josh, you know, my parents were seven in Venice. Our Sabbath starts from Friday sunset to Sabbath sunset and you know most games are on Fridays yes sir a lot of games on Friday night so for me to be a part of the team the first coach said well if you can't play on Friday nights you're not gonna play ball I'm not gonna have you on the team but then again it just so happened Mr. Dave Gardner who went on who was my freshman coach and went on to coach Havelock High for years became the uh, the ninth grade uh, a JV basketball coach and he he was also my physical education teacher and we would go in the gym and play ball, and he said, Mark, are you gonna come out to the team? I said, well, the head coach told me he wouldn't get, he said, come out. And I came out for the team, and I had, I'm gonna tell you, if you're going to be, and this is something I took through my life in ball and work and all that, if you're gonna compete, be the best you can at competing. Yes, sir. So for me to compete against all these other guys, and knowing I already had a disadvantage, can't play on Friday night, I had to be as good 
were better than were better anyone. Better than anyone. anyone. And I'm so, the one that so, step out there. So when they, so they would say, we got to have him on the team. And Mr. Mr. and I had to leave that Friday. Last trial was on a Friday. Sun was setting. It was time for seven. I left early. But one of the guys said, your name is the first one on the list to be on the team. Ooh. Then I then I went to West Craven my sophomore year, could have consolidated Vanceboro, Jasper, Fort Vaughan with all at West Craven. First year I was a sophomore at West, West Craven High. Uh, and then a gentleman by the name of Mr. Robert Jolly was the JV basketball coach. He had seen me at, at Jasper. And he uh so he said, like, I want you to play football, Mark. And uh, and I said, well, to get you, because I'm going to be JV basketball coach, I want you to play JV ball. I said, well, Mr. Jolly, I never play organized ball, football. He said, well, go out for the team. So I went out there in my street clothes, just like it was now, has tennis shoes on. So Mr. Mike Rudisso was the uh, the football, JV football coach. Yeah, sir. So he said, I, so Mr. Jolly said, I said, Mike, I think you want to try to get this kid on your team. He said, I ain't, had, I ain't know about cliques. I ain't know which was a linebacker, a guard. Oh, no, you ain't know so, nothing. So the only thing he said, well, I'm going to do this. I said, go down to that line right there and make a so this call. Say, go 10 yards down, cut to the sidelines. And he threw me the ball. He said, do a slant. Go here and slant that way. He threw me the ball and I caught it. He said, go down that way. And I, I'll catch it. He said, you're going to be my starting flanker, my wide receiver on the football team. So they found somebody that gave me some cleats. Yes. <laughs> they gave me the uniform and all of that. And so I played football. Now that was the first year we didn't win any games, but the, my coach, coach uh, Rudolph, so I would always remember this. He called me Super Jock because I never kicked off. And one evening they was having a trial for the kickoff. He said, Mark, come and kick this ball off. And I kicked it off. He looked at it and stuff. It went just about to the other. He said, he said, I ain't know nothing about procedure or anything. Uh, you nothing. just doing I just doing off just natural, uh, natural ability. Yeah. And he said, he said, you're kicking off tomorrow night. And I was a safety on, on defense. So every time a team hit the field, I was on it. And I got MVP. First year playing organized football. That's what's up. And then I played basketball. We brought the first trophy to West Craven as a JV basketball team. We won the conference that year uh, as a JV team. And then my next year, I was a junior. And Mr. Tom Langdon became. He saw me on the JV, and he saw me, and uh, and so he he allowed me to come out for the team. Uh, I'm gonna tell you, I ran into some prejudice then because there was some because of the consolidation. Some folks feel like I was taking the playing time of some white awesome. gentlemen who were stars that came, mm -hmm. and so the, I had some issues with the principal. And that's one of the reasons why I got that half trophy up there because they want to kind of make an example of me and kind of really cue me. And I'm gonna tell you, when I got that half trophy. Because when I, Mr. Lane let me play, and he, he, he didn't let me start. I would come in at the end of the, the, the second quarter whenever I played, but I was a third leading scorer in the whole area. So what? Yeah, so I played on the three quarters of the game as a third leading scorer in the area. Uh, and so, so my, uh, so I be played that year, my senior year, uh, you know, I had other difficulties because then it was another white gentleman coming up to play the ball and then so I had two that I had to compete against play my same position and so the principal was not going to let me play and that's why I really appreciate my teammates at that time they went to the teacher's lounge all right y'all thank you for watching the Joshua Coverson show please continue to show your love and support by clicking the subscribe button below the video check us out next week on the next episode of the Josh Coverson show we out